When you're building a computer, you're constantly told, oh, this is fragile, wear an anti-static wristband, do all this, do all that, don't drop that, don't touch that, don't touch the pins there, it'll break otherwise. But how fragile really are these parts? I have got five weak graphics cards that I don't care what happens to them, and I'm going to be putting them through five different tests, chucking them back on a test bench, and seeing what survives and what doesn't. It might be simulating anything that could actually happen to just outlandish things, just to see how far we can push it and make it still work. I've picked these really old um, EVGA uh, GeForce 8400 GSs because it doesn't have a massive core and stuff on them to save them, as well as I had five of them on hand and I also don't use them, so I don't care what happens to them. They don't even have like a gig of VRAM. Because for this test, we don't need something powerful, we just need something that'll post. So with that, let's quickly test all the cards just to make sure that they're all gonna work. And let's get into some torture testing. GPU one, clearly running. This is before the test and the unmarked thing. Second GPU, clearly working, obviously same type. But I've marked this one with red for GPU two. Number three works. Admittedly, notably, louder fan than the other two, but works. And due to that, it's been marked black on the end of this. GPU 4 is working. And I ran out of markers. So this one's red and black. And then card number 5 working. Card number 5 just has a red cross on it. And with that, we've got 5 graphics cards to do different tests on. Just to see how durable they are and how much they can survive. We've got GPU 1 in a container. I think it's kind of obvious what we're going to do to it. I have completely submerged this GPU underwater. I'm going to leave that in there for two hours. And then we will come back to it. For graphics card number two, very special plans involved a shovel. Graphics card number two, I've got a hole here that I've pre-dug. And I'm going to bury it for about two to three hours and see how, um, if it lasts in the dirt. So I'm going to chuck you just in there. It's a little bit rockier dirt than I would like, but oh well. Then mark it with a stick. And then once again, we'll come back and check on that in two to three hours. Graphics card number three, I wanted to kind of put somewhere in between the first and the second one. And I live on a little bit of property, so I had this really muddy dam. So for graphics card number two, I stuck it to a fishing rod and decided to leave it in my dam once again for about two to three hours in the mud and the water with things like fish swimming around in there, there are fish. So really a torture test between the first two options before we really ramp it up in number three and four because trust me, you'll get insane. On the note of graphics card four, here's how I lit it on fire. I stuck the graphics card to a metal rod and hovered it in the fire for about 10 seconds, which was enough to do some severe damage just to really ramp it up to see how much it could take. And now for graphics card number 5, something that's semi-realistic is plenty of things like packages or boxes get hit by cars and that sort of stuff all the time, you read it on reddit. So I got the next easiest and closest thing, which was my ride on mower. What I didn't realise I still had on was the blades spinning. So I ended up hitting this graphics card with a mower including the blade. And the PCI slot flew off mesh, killing like a panther. I'll admit it got a little bit darker out here than I thought it would, a little bit quicker than I thought it would. but. Oh, dog's trying to figure it out. Do we have a graphics card under here that might still work? Oh my god, it's absolutely filthy. We've officially put the graphics cards all through stress tests. Now this is the first one with the white tip. As, as you saw, this one was just dipped in water. Visibly, I don't see any major damage as this has been given some time to dry off. And I honestly don't see any reason that this one shouldn't work. And it, a lot of dirt actually came off the card in the water. If anything, I think it's going to be cleaner. But well, yeah, there's no major damage I can see. But let's plug it in. But before we do, you'll notice this in all the cards. I've just noticed, right? It's got a VGA connector on the front and everything. But nothing connecting the VGA connector to the um, card. That's applicable for all of the graphics cards I'm testing on. How weird is that? The card's plugged in. Let's see if we get an output. The fan spins to life. And we actually still get a fine output. No issues. Obviously there might be more underlying issues. But for this one, all we're asking them to do is boot into Windows, which it's had no issues doing. As these cards are by no means powerful, I'm not going to be stress testing them or anything, as I also did it beforehand. But it works and boots up into Windows. 
Card number one with just water is completely fine. Card number two is the dirt card. This is the one that was placed under the dirt for a while, which if you look at fans and especially things like the VGA connector, I haven't gone and washed this off on purpose. There is still some visible dirt on it. I've given it a good shake, but I haven't properly washed it. There's also a tiny little bit of damage on the PCI, on the PCI slot itself. I personally reckon this will be fine. But let's plug it in and see how it goes. There was definitely dirt in the fan. I heard it spin out, but I don't hear it anymore. And we still get a connection. Still get visuals. The, it's still, and as you saw, the DVI connector, which is the one connecting it, was full of dirt and still no issues getting to Windows. Yep. Full connection. Here we have card number three, which once again has the black on the end. This was thrown into my dam, which was dirty water, which is kind of a mix of the first two. I thought it would leave more residual dirt, which it doesn't seem to have done. There's a little bit, but nothing major. It seems like it's dried already. So I reckon this one's got a better chance of working than even the second one. And again, another the first three cards we get full visuals from. Water couldn't, water couldn't stop them, dirt couldn't stop them, and dirty water couldn't stop them. This one does have a loud fan, but from memory, because I left them a few days to dry, this one had a loud, a loud fan before we started as well. Now this next one is where it starts to get really crazy. This one was put in fire. This one's got some more substantial damage. It's got visible burns on it. The cooler, the cooler is held on by two plastic pins which melted which left an exposed dye, which has been in the fire. The fan has melted back, the plastics have melted back, the cable covering caught fire at one point and is just leaving, and it's just leaving ash everywhere. The fan cable caught fire. I honest, I honestly don't think this one will work, and if it does, it will put a, it won't put out the correct image. It will be a distorted image. Oh my God, the fan spins to life. It probably would have helped if I plugged in the DVI. The fan has spun to life. But the card is sadly not even putting out an output. Now this last card, I'm not even going to throw into my test bench. Because it is missing caps. And so many things. Like a DVI port. This one, I wanted to simulate getting hit by a car. Because, you know, packages might get hit sometimes. So I hit it with my lawnmower. So this was hit by a lawnmower and its blades. Which... The DVI port is gone. The PCI slot was never found in my backyard. The fan housing is missing a fan. We found the ha the fan. It looks like this. It's seen better days. I've got the heatsink. These two cables are both unattached. The die is exposed. TLDR, there's no... Like, I don't think the die is damaged. But the actual... Like, this thing's missing off the board. I don't think there's any way in hell this works, and quite frankly, I don't want to damage my test bench. So I'm not even going to bother throwing this on, because the result's going to be, no, it doesn't work. So moral of the story, your graphics card prom can probably survive a lot more than you think it can. Just because, like, you drop it or something, or like, you accidentally poke it, it's probably going to be fine. It required fire to stop these ones. And you may be saying, oh, aren't you normally a massive supporter for e-waste? And getting rid of e-waste, why would you destroy these working graphics cards. That's why I used the weaker ones. Those ones don't have a use except for maybe putting out an image. But I wasn't going to be able to rehome that many of them. There was just no modern day use for those cards that I was going to be able to spend the time to find. I'm sure there there is uses, just not, not any that I have the time to go looking for. And if I was going to use any card for the educational purposes, because I do think this sort of stuff is good to know and good to do, I was going to use these ones that I had five of identical, weren't getting used and were literally just in my cupboard, and were weak with no real use. I'm going to keep the ones that are still working, but all of the broken ones will be properly e-wasted, don't worry. Anyway, if you found this video informational, or if, even if you just found it interesting, please make sure to like and subscribe, as I'm a small tech channel and really help out a ton. If you want to see a video where I tested out a 12 year old CPU in 2023, click here. And if you want to see what video that YouTube recommends for you from my channel, click here. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.